Hello and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So we're gonna do a tutorial today and this one's gonna be a little bit different than the tutorials we usually do because this is for a modern piece. Usually we do folk tunes or classical music, things like that. But I wanted to do something that I have taught a whole bunch of times in my studio and it is the Final Fantasy theme, specifically from the Japanese Final Fantasy IV version, um, Final Fantasy II in North America. Anyway, let's get started. So if you're not like a huge video game fan or anything like that, I do not want you to be afraid or scared off of this tutorial because of it. I have taught this piece to all kinds of kids and adults with varying pastimes and hobbies and it's useful as a finger exercise and it sounds nice. So it doesn't, you don't even need to really think about the fact that it's from a video game. Though there's a PDF that I created for this piece that you can download for free. Um, I generally teach this one by rote or by ear, just because this one's not so much about developing reading skills, but developing the ability to play fast finger patterns on the piano. So let's take a quick look at the music and then I'll play it through on the piano for you. At a first glance, this might not look particularly easy, but once you start looking at it in more detail, you'll notice that there's a lot of repetitive patterns. So you'll notice that the whole first part, so basically all the way up to here, you're just playing the same four notes over and over. C, D, E, G, and then you can see C, D, E, G in the right hand, and then the left hand crosses over C, D, E, G, etc. Then once you get here, you do the exact same thing, just a different set of four notes. This time we're doing A, B, C, E, and so on, etc. The whole piece is, is simple to comprehend in this way. After I play through it on the piano, we'll talk about the things that make this piece challenging and why I think it's such a great study piece. There are three main challenges in this piece, which is why I like to consider it an etude. So the first challenge is playing it at the appropriate fast speed. The second challenge is keeping the notes clean and distinct, so not mushing them together. And then the third challenge are the last two chord patterns. So we're gonna take a look at each of these challenges one by one. So the first challenge is speed. Since your hands are in constant motion crossing over each other, there are some things that you have to keep in mind. So first of all, the hand that isn't playing, should always be preparing to play. So you notice how my left hand, when it wasn't playing, was shifting over, now my right hand shifting under and so on. So you're, in, you're constantly in motion and this decreases your chance of error. Because if you were to just kind of let your left hand sit like this, then you have to like fly your hand across the keyboard and it's just awkward and you'll be more likely to make mistakes. Whereas if you're in constant motion, you're always preparing and you never have to do really rushed motions. So secondly, keep in mind what your landing notes are. When I'm playing through this C pattern, on my way up my landing note is C. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So I start with C, then another C, then I land on C, then I land on C, then I land on C. On my way back, my landing note is G, 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 and so on. So um, keeping in your head what your landing notes are will help with accuracy. Thirdly, keep looking ahead to the next set of notes. You don't want your eyes fixing too closely on any one place. You, you want your eyes to be constantly scanning ahead to the new notes, where your hands are gonna be landing. I, I make this comparison a lot, but it's like reading. You don't, you don't read one word at a time. You read words, but you also scan the full sentence. You want your eyes to constantly be scanning ahead to where they're jumping. So anyway, with all that in mind, speed will start to come once you start becoming more familiar with the pattern, and that just takes practice. The next challenge we have is keeping the notes clean and distinct, and not letting them get mushy. 
One thing that tends to happen when we try to do fast finger patterns is our fingers mush the notes on the keyboards. This happens when you don't have enough control over your fingers. It's easy to have control over fingers when we're playing slowly. The problem is when we speed up. Uh, that control, which allows us to press a key at the precise microsecond, starts to break down and fall apart if we start going too fast. And the result is fast playing that sounds really blurry, kind of like this. Um, it's mushy. So learning this piece is actually a really great way to develop that finger control. I've seen students gain a few points of performance clarity simply by learning this tune. Um, but you do have to walk before you run to so start slow, to start building in that control. The final challenge of this piece is the last two chord patterns. So until this point, all the chord patterns um, have the same finger numbers, five, four, three, one, one, two, three, five, um, but different starting points. But for the last two chords, we use entirely different finger patterns and entirely different chords. Both of these are beautiful major seven chords. The first one starts on A flat. So to play this one, you need to stretch out your fingers like such. The other ones are in a closed finger position where you're in kind of like a five, five finger shape where each of your five fingers are on a key. This one, your fingers kind of expand a little bit more to reach a little bit farther. And with the B flat one, you need that same open hand position. When you're learning this part, keep your eye out for the guide notes. So we start with A flat, on the way up, and then on the way down, G is our guide note. Most of my students find this part the trickiest to play accurately, so one way to learn this is to spend maybe three times as much effort and time on these chords than you would for the rest of the piece. So the other chord, B flat, major seven, is very similar. You need that open hand position, you're not using finger four, you're going five, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, five, four, four. So once you finish that part, uh, so once you finish this part, you would in theory play it as a continuous slur. You can go back to the very beginning and go on ad infinitum. But since we don't want to, you know, play the song that never ends, I just like to end on the notes we start with, some variation of that C pattern like this. That just makes the ending seem a little uh, less abrupt. Whereas if I were to just go fast and, and try to end like that, it just seems really like, whoa, okay, there's the ending in your face. But if you do a little bit of a ritardando, it feels a little bit more natural. So that's how I usually end the piece. And that is all for today's tutorial. You can go to the pianotv.net website and download the PDF at the associated blog post. That'll all be linked below and let me know how it goes. It's kind of a fun one to, to work on. So thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can hang out with me on social media and you can also come visit us on Patreon if you'd like to show your support that way. And I'll catch you in the next video. There's a couple ideas I have. You could turn this pencil into a sword. Have me hanging out with a Super Nintendo. You could like put a controller in my hands. I think my hands are facing the wrong way for that, but.